on Sportsnet. Brought to you by Home Hardware and Building Center locations. Homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. And by the 2013 Honda CRV, an IIHS top safety pick. Honda is the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Welcome to Rogers Center. It is a spectacular night here in Toronto. The roof is wide open tonight. No threats of thunderstorms in the area. Walt Weiss's Rockies were shut out last night on just five hits. Now let's take a look at the Rockies lineup. The stunning lineups are brought to you by Quaker State. Real, durable oil. Top of the order, different look tonight. Josh Rutledge is the leadoff man. He takes over for Dexter Fowler, who gets the day off. Jordan Pacheco is also in the lineup. Carlos Gonzalez, seven home runs, 22 RBIs in June. That leads the entire National League. He's off to a great start this month. He was the player of the week last week. Michael Kadiah, during 2013 interleague play, he's got a 417 average, 15 for 36, a pair of homers in five RBIs, and they'll face their former teammate, the right-hander, Esmeo Rogers. Well, Esme Rogers coming off a great start. His last outing, seven strong innings, only giving up one home run. That the home run by Nelson Cruz. And he has now just surrendered two earned runs in his last two outings. So he's pitching well. Defensively behind Rogers, because the starting pitching has been so good, defense has been really keen. Everybody anticipates every pitch being put into play. Cabrera, Davis, and Bautista back in right field. DeRosa is at third tonight. It's Duras Bonifacio up the middle. Edwin Encarnacion's at first. J.P. Aaron Sevilla will handle Ismail Rogers here tonight. Good to see Jose back in the lineup in right field. Missed a couple of games with dehydration and some cramping in his legs. Good to see him out in his familiar position in right field. So we are set to go. We mentioned the starters have four wins last time through the rotation. That's been a dramatic turnaround. The starting pitching has been hot. Ismail Rogers is set. Here's the first pitch of the ball game. Off the inside edge, and we are underway. Josh Rutledge gets the start at second base. He is the everyday second baseman, making his 41st start at second. He fouls that one off the chin of J.P. Aaron Cedia. Rogers making his fourth start. This is his. 26th career start. He is 1 0 in three games as a starter. Boy, that's his, been his bread and butter. Yeah. Jack, that pitch right there. There's that sinker that he has really kind of learned how to throw. And it's just a fastball, two seam fastball that he's able to get his hand on top of and just runs down and into right handers. Very effective pitch. 1 and 2. Breaking ball hit on the ground is Sturris behind the bag at second in time one down. This Bill Rogers we mentioned he's making his fourth start of the season ERA is good opponents batting average impressive and the whip just over one. He has really taken to this role. Well no question I think he's uh, I think he's comfortable with it I think in the bullpen knowing that you might have to pitch every day. Uh, you, you don't you don't get any kind of routine and as a starter you knowing you have those four to five days off depending on off days I think it fits him well and he's just really relishing this role right now you know I see more pitches that his ability to spin the breaking balls a little bit better we've been talking about his two seam fastball where he's sinking it in on right handers using his change up he might flip in a, a curveball every now and then out of the bullpen it was one inning here it is let's go. Jordan Pacheco takes strike two. Yeah, he only goes down in the zone. I think that's a good point you bring up because in the bullpen, sometimes you're only facing one hitter. You might face a whole inning, but you might might just face one hitter, and that hitter is not going to see everything you have. If you're exposing a weakness, say he doesn't hit the ball away, and you're just pounding fastballs away, where as a starter, you have to really, over the course of the game, show him everything. He showed him three strikes right there. Bottom of the zone. Bill Cousy getting what four from Jordan Pacheco, but Rogers has his first strike out of the night. Pretty good pitch right there. You can see the grip. That ball's going to go straight down. Look at that thing. Good job by J. Pierre and Sevier really to catch that ball and hold it right there for the home plate umpire to see. JP got a little refresher course from Sal Fasano when the team was in Chicago, and I'm already seeing the benefits of it. Done a better job of presenting the target and keeping that glove quiet. 
Carlos Gonzalez, tonight he's in left field. Gonzalez was the DH last night. He finished up 0 for 4, but maybe hit the hardest ball all night when he lined out to first base in the eighth inning. First pitch breaking ball. Isn't that funny? The Blue Jays get a blooper to win the ball game, and Gonzalez hits a rocket and doesn't have anything to show for it. Lynn made a great play at first, and it was hit to his glove side. He snared it for the out. Yeah, that's the beauty of baseball. You know, you can say, well, you got four hard hit balls, you go 0 for 4, and his Sturris ends up with two hits, broke up the no hitter, and drives in the only runs of a ball game with a bloop over the shortstop's head. Now, during this winning streak, the, the breaks have finally started going the Blue Jays' way. Jack, what was it like for you to pitch against the Tigers for the first time when you left them? Well, it may at the time it was the hardest thing I ever did in the big leagues. Facing your old teammates, especially guys that you admired so much and had so many great moments with. And uh, you know, try to keep from laughing a few times. Take it serious, try to focus. It was not easy to focus, especially with guys like Cecil Fielder who was Telling you that he's going to take you deep right in the middle of your pitch. <laughs> Do you remember how you did? Uh, I threw him a changeup. I was trying to screw him into the ground, and I threw him a changeup that went about 50 miles an hour. He did screw into the ground, but the next time he had a rocket. 2 2 pitch. Bouncing ball. Bonifacio has it. Quick inning for Osmir Rogers against his former team. The Blue Jays won two to nothing last night on three hits. Melky Cabrera will try to turn that around tonight, followed by Jose Bautista and Edwin Encarnacion batting 327 in interleague play. Four hits or less. Last night was a beauty. They got some clutch hitting and timely hits. Top of the order. Melky Cabrera, Jose Bautista, Edwin Encarnacion. We mentioned his 327 batting average in interleague play, including four homers. And he's driven in 13. And then way down in the bottom of the order, Emilio Bonifacio is back in the lineup at second base because he's got a 337 career average against Colorado. And he scored 17 runs. They are set to take on the lefty. Jeff Francis. Yeah, 32 year old left hander Jeff Francis making his 10th start of the year. He's uh, making his second start since coming off a 15 day disabled list where he had a slight groin pull. I think he got that running bases, but there's his numbers for this year. Francis misses the inside corner. It's a ball on the strike. Francis making his fourth start against the Blue Jays has won his three previous outings. One of those wins came as a member of the Kansas City Royals. Hit up the middle, base hit for Melky Cabrera. Defensively behind Jeff Francis, Gold Glover in left field. Carlos Gonzalez has two Gold Gloves to his credit. Tyler Colvin making his third start in the center. Michael Kadire with three assists. 
Nolan Arenado at third base. Herrera and Rutledge up the middle. Todd Helton has three gold gloves. And the catcher is Willem Rosario. Willem has a terrific arm behind the plate. And in the outfield, they've got some good throwing arms. None better than this guy right here. He leads the National League in outfield assists with eight to go along with those gold gloves. Jose Bautista goes after the first pitch and rips it over the screen out of play. Yeah, on both corners in the outfield, they've got some guys that can throw. Michael Kadir, a lot like Carlos Gonzalez, got a great arm. Very few people run on him, so pretty good defensive team. Kadir's played every position, but short and catcher. I mean, he can really play all the positions. He came up with Minnesota, and they weren't sure where to put him. They had him at third, used him at second a lot. He's played first. Played all the outfield positions, but he is a terrific defender. Baseball player. He's a baseball player. He can play all over the place. Ball on the strike to Bautista. Well, Jeff Francis, one of those pitchers, you, you don't expect anything hard. He's going to get you out with breaking ball, breaking ball, off speed, off speed, and take a little off of that. He's pitched well his last time out, but you're going to see a steady diet of breaking balls. Yeah, don't look for the Jeff Francis from a few years ago when he threw a little bit harder. He'll drop that really slow curveball in on you. Well, De La Rosa, Jose De La Rosa pitched very effective last night, basically showing the fastball, but off the plate. And Francis is going to have that same kind of approach. Downstairs. Jeff Francis. Was with the Rockies from 2002 through 2010. He signed with Kansas City in 2011. Then he signed a minor league contract with Cincinnati in 2012, and the Reds let him go in June, and Colorado re signed him. Three one pitch to Bautista. He takes his strike. Francis was the ninth overall pick in the draft in 2002. Only Adam Lowen was drafted higher. Lowen was a fifth round pick also in 2002. Francis went to University of British Columbia. Foul back. Cabrera was on the move. Trying to stir it up early. The Blue Jays against Francis. Uh, he won't strike that many players out. So I think you can see the runners take off. At first base in these types of situations, stay out of the double play. Your percentages of the strike him out, throw him out, go down. Full count, Cabrera with a modest lead. There he goes. Pitch to Bautista is a broken mat, little tapper back to the mound. Francis goes to first. Cabrera moves up, one out. Jeff Francis, we mentioned he was the ace of the staff in 2007 during the World Series year. This year, his career numbers through 2004 through 2007, 47 and 34. Then he had shoulder surgery in 2009, and it's been a rough road for him ever since. Yeah, it's one. Of, he's one of those guys that you know. I look out there and see Jeff Francis say he's been with this club forever, and yet he's only got seven plus years in the big leagues with Colorado. You know those numbers they don't look that different except in the win loss column. They all look about the same and a whip of one four and an ERA of four and a half to five. Well he led the Rockies in innings pitched last year with just 113 innings that says a lot about their starting pitching a year ago. Edwin Encarnacion goes after the first pitch. 265 on the season for. Edwin, he's at first base tonight as Adam Lind is the DH. Who Jays with a chance to score early. Cabrera at second. Driven deep to center field. On the run is Colvin. It's off the wall. Cabrera is coming around third. He's going to score. And Carrasquillo has a stand-up RBI double. Well, you can't hit him much harder than that right there. That is a absolute 
Line drive right off the center field wall. 400 foot line drive. The frozen rope to center field. Edwin got a breaking ball up. And he uncoils on that thing. He squares that thing up and hits a seed. Good job by Melky Cabrera to read double. And a good job by DeMario Hale, who is coaching third base tonight, to wave him home, aggressively scoring the game's first run. And Connor Sean picks up his 56th RBI of the season. He's third in the American League in that department. And the Blue Jays have a one nothing lead. Here's DeMarlo Hale, who is going to be coaching third base the next couple of days. Louis Rivera is away for his daughter's graduation, so DeMarlo has been down at third before. He is familiar with the duties. I was teasing him before the game. I was showing him the wave and stop all at the same time, and he just said, no, 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 Jack, it's this way. He says, I... I use it on my right hand for for the run, and I use my left hand as a stop because I don't get them together. <laughs> there he is judging it. You can see he gets down the line, and he's going to send Melky. Now he comes up to third base to give him a little voice command. Also, Lynn singles in the center, and Carnashon got a good break. Hale is waving him around, and he will score. Lynn picks up the RBI. The Blue Jays have matched their total run output last night. It's two to nothing in the first. Well, after the Edwin Encarnacion double to center field, Tyler Colvin, who's playing center, backed up a couple of steps and watch when this ball gets out there, hanging breaking ball once again. How deep Colvin is out in center field. Edwin reads it. He knows that he's playing deep and he's going to score without a throw. Center fielder. Playing deep, plays it on a hop, and just you can see it. No chance to throw out Edwin, just lobs it back into second base. Another hit against the lefty for Adam Lind. He's 14 for 29. Mark DeRosa hammers this ball to the left off the wall. Lind is headed for third. Gonzalez has a great arm. He beats the throw in there. Perosa hammers a double off the wall down the left field line, and the Blue Jays are all over Jeff Francis here in the first. Well, they have to mix it up a little bit, maybe throw a breaking ball in the dirt. Walt Weiss is saying, Jeff, you got to get the ball down. DeRosa all over this first pitch. He's been doing this since they put him in the starting rotation. Starting lineup, first pitch fastball all over it. Now the key for all three of those hits. Where all three of them were up in the zone, and you get a hot hitting team. Edwin's been hot all year. Adams been on fire for a while, and Mark DeRosa, smart hitter. All three of those guys getting the ball up to hit. Blue Jays have one more hit this inning than they had in nine innings last night. The infield is in. Rajay Davis, why not go up there hacking? Don't you find it interesting in the first inning that the infield is playing in? I do. But the Rockies were shut out last night on just five hits. But this is a tough infield to play in. Jonathan Herrera, the shortstop, has backed up a couple of steps. Lind at third, Rosa at second. Rajay face hit to left field. Lind's coming in to score. De Rosa's being waved in. Here's the throw. Now De Rosa stop, and he is out. Hale waved De Rosa around third. Gonzalez has a terrific arm and made a good throw right to the cutoff man, Arenado. And DeRosa stopped and then was tagged out as he got back to third. Yeah, Mark did not read DeMarlo Hale at all there. When he came to third base, he literally stopped at the bag. And DeMarlo was waving him in, but I think he got caught up himself and then did not get back. And there's that young Nolan Arenado, just a baseball instinct kind of guy. He almost deeks Rosa, and then it's just a foot race, and the younger guy wins. Johnny on the spot right there, Arenado. Looked like DeRosa was anticipating getting the stop sign when he was coming around third base. And as he explains his case right there to Mark Burley. And Arenado continues to impress. He's playing just his 46th big league game, and it looks like he's a 10 year veteran the way he moves around at third. So the Blue Jays have a three nothing lead. Three runs on five hits. 
Rajay Davis at second picks up in the RBI. You know, France is going to try to shorten his lead at second. Isn't it interesting how the Blue Jays have come out smoking after being held to just three hits last night? That's generally the case. I think it's a good indication of how well Jorge De La Rosa threw last night. He threw a whale of a game. Aaron Sebia drives it to left. This ball is off the wall. Davis is around third. He'll score. Here's the throw to second. And Aaron Sebia slides around the second baseman, Josh Rutledge. Oh, that was a great slide by JP right there. The throw actually beat him from Gonzalez in left field. But he made the old back door, grab the base, try to avoid the tag slide. And it scores the fourth run. You know, a couple of things as the pitching coach, Jim Wright's going to come out early in the count once again. JP is all over this one. You were just talking about Jorge De La Rosa and how good his stuff played last night. You come back the next night after a fast facing a guy like that and facing a pitcher that doesn't have the type of stuff like that. It's almost like batting practice for these hitters. Yeah, you yeah, don't you, see the same quality pitches for sure. You kind of wonder why they have two left handers with similar type stuff. And I'm not saying Francis is anywhere near what no. he had. De La Rosa had the good screwball last night the sinker down and away. But uh, two left handers they're basically breaking ball pitchers. Yeah the only thing similar about those two is they throw left handed. Yeah. <laughs> and one guy's got a great splitter and throws 92 93. Francis is more of a change up curveball guy. Meister Sturz was the hero of last night's game. He drove in the only two runs of the ball game. He had a pair of hits. He also broke up the no hitter of Jorge De La Rosa with one out in the sixth. And he saved a run. For Josh Johnson with a fine defensive play in the fifth with two outs ranging behind the bag to throw out Jonathan Herrera. Ball and a strike to Meister Asturis. Down the stairs. Jeff Francis, we mentioned he won his first three starts against the Blue Jays. He had held them to five earned runs in 19 innings pitched. Well, tonight he's allowed four earned runs in the first inning already. And there's another base runner at second. Esmail Rogers is enjoying what he's seen so far. Bouncing ball off the glove. Herrera at short throws his Sturis out. The inning is over. The Blue Jays sent eight men to the plate in the first against Jeff Francis. Mark DeRosa drives the ball to the
But four runs on six hits in the first. They could have had another run, but there was a base running mistake. DeRosa stopped at third. Then he looks up and sees De Marlo Hale saying, come on home. And by the time he gets back, Hernando tags him before he could get to third. And they talk it over in the dugout a bit. He's saying, Carlos Gonzalez has got eight outfield assists out there. I cannot score a single to left field. And he was right. <laughs> yeah. Milo Hale. Can't yeah, do it when you stop, that's yeah. for sure. Yeah, once he stopped, he was dead. He should have just stayed right there. So Ismael Rogers has a big lead here in the first. What's he got to do to maintain his focus now? Well, that's the big key right now. You get a big lead early in a ball game. You've got to come out and try to make sure you put away that first hitter. At least throw him strikes. You got runs to work with. You don't want to walk or get behind like he has right there. 0 2 or 2 0. Make him hit the ball. Can you go to the mound and say and really believe it's really 0 0 when you're up 4 0? I, I don't. I think you always know what the score is. I mean, if you're a baseball player, everybody knows what the yeah. score is. But you got to realize look at I've got runs to work with right now and therefore I do not want to walk anybody make yeah. them hit their way on I think the biggest thing a pitcher has to do is just shoot for bigger parts of the plate yeah. instead of shooting for the outer quarter shoot for halves you just have that much room to work with Michael could with the check swing foul here he hits a ground ball and kind shows took a step toward it and what a recovery oh my he took a step toward that ball as if he was going to play it and then realized he had to hurry back. Bonifacio made a good throw right on the money at first, but in kind of show did a great job. He's playing way off the first base and Bonifacio does him a favor by bouncing yeah. the ball to him. That that buys him a little more time. Find the bag and then find the ball. That's what you do as a first baseman. It's a great play. On both ends, Bonifacio knew that Edwin wasn't going to be turned around, so he bounced it to give him that little split second more. One out, there's that big first out of the inning. There's that good power sinker that Esmo's basically learned two starts ago. And that was Pat Hankin who showed him out in the bullpen. And, you know, it's something that I remember the first time I learned my split finger forkball. And two starts later, I was using it in the game. And once I got it, it was like, oh boy, I have something special here. I think that's the same feeling he has with his little sinker. There's another broken mat grounder to third. DeRosa airmails it. It's off the glove of Incarnacion. That is an air, and I think both players were a little bit at fault. DeRosa reached back for a little extra airmail that Incarnacion kind of stretched without really thinking it was going to stay up there almost as if he said well I've got it and then the ball took off on it well credit first the runner for busting it down there that's the catcher Willie Rosario take it quickly down there and then DeRosa gets under this one just a little bit Mark underneath the throw and it sails on him and Edwin trying to go up there keep his foot on it that case right there he probably would have been better off jumping up catching it and hoping to come down before the runner gets to the bag. So it's an air on the third baseman, Mark DeRosa. That's his fourth air at third. Todd Helton takes one inside. Helton was one for four last night. He and Michael Kadir had back to back hits in the second. It was first and third. Nobody out. Looked like Colorado was going to score, but Johnson stranded both base runners. Defense made a terrific play to record the first out of the inning, and then they made a bad throw on the second one to get a runner in scoring position. Well, all of a sudden, since Todd Helton stepped to the plate, strike zone got smaller. Well, that last one was up a little bit, but I thought that one breaking ball might have caught a part of the plate. Either way, S. Mills got to figure out a way to come back. And he does. 96 with the heater. That's a strike. The air by DeRosa was just the second air during this win streak. I mean, everything goes together, doesn't it? Mm -hmm.
The good pitching, timely hitting, and the defense. They all have been tightened up. Cut will take the walk. Well, let's take a look at some of the numbers that we have seen from Esmil Rogers with the sinker usage. In April, just 4%, May, 13%. But since he has moved into the starting rotation and taught that sinker that you were talking about by Pat Hankin, it has doubled from May to June. And it's a great pitch for him. It's a pitch that he can make go opposite of his slider. That's a deadly combination. So Rogers now with two aboard and one out. Uh, pitch to the rookie, Nolan Arenado. Arenado had a double in last night's game. Hits this one sharply to DeRosa. Second for one, back to first, double play. DeRosa got just exactly what he was hoping for. A chance of redemption. Rodgers gets the ground ball with that sinker. And DeRosa calmly takes it to the backhand side, fires to second to start the inning-ending double play. It'll start the inning ending double play so the air had no impact and Ismail Rogers said hey man don't worry about it. You got the double play and we're all cool. DeRosa is hot because he went over and he said hey my bad man that's a terrible throw and he let in Carlos you know it. The Blue Jays have committed just 11 errors in their 33 wins. Compared to 33 errors in their 36 losses so it all goes together and it's not an accident pitching and defense I mean great teams through the history of baseball have been able to put together great runs bounce to third they have figured out that you can't hit it by that guy Nolan Hernando throws out Bonifacio one down Blue Jays on Sportsnet brought to you by the 2013 Honda CRV and IIHS top safety pick Honda is the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Beautiful evening in Toronto, and the roof is wide open at Rogers Center, and the Blue Jays have a 4 0 lead. Well, Buck, it only, and Jack, it only took me 10 innings, but I know who Arenado reminds me of. He's Scott Rowland. It's a younger version of Scott Rowland. The way he handles himself, the way he picks it over there at third base. Yeah, doesn't get too excited. How about Eric Chavez, Oakland, same type of soft hands and not a real fast runner, but quick, quick hands, quick feet. He might not have the flair of it. Uh, Eric Chavez. Chavez was was a dandy over there, but he's a good one. 
Two and one to Melky Cabrera. Melky pulls it foul. Cabrera had a single and scored the first run of the ball game. Blue Jays sent eight men to the plate in the first. Scored four runs on six hits. They were four for five with runners in scoring position. Here's the 2 2. Stays alive. And how many of those were on the first pitch, too? I mean, they went up there with their hitting shoes on in the first inning, just looking for anything from Jeff Francis. Lind had another base hit against the lefty. Rivera cubes it off the end of the bat. Jeff Francis might be pitching for his spot in the rotation. Roy Oswald is coming back and going to pitch for the Rockies on Thursday. This is where you've got to take advantage of a guy. He's, you got him for four in the first inning, and you just don't realize how close you are to get him out of the game. Cabrera flies out to the center fielder Tyler Colvin. Two down. They mentioned the 22 year old third baseman last night. He put on quite a show. Great instincts at uh, the hot corner. You can see the soft hands and the good reflexes. And then with the bat, he's got a nice level, quick swing. He's going to hit for some power. He's got five home runs already. He's just an impressive kid at just 22 years old. Two years ago, as a 20 year old, he drove in 122 runs, the most in the minors. Good job by the Rockies. Drafted him in the second round. And then develop him. Artista just missed outside the third base back. Arenado is a 2009 draftee. So he has. Rocketed through their minor league system. Artista flares this one into the seats. In the second deck. Well, there's a fastball at 90 miles an hour from Francis, the hardest one he's thrown tonight. Francis was the ace of the staff in 2007 when the Rockies made that great run in September. They won the NL West, and Francis started all three game ones during the postseason. The division series, the ALCS, and the World Series. <laughs> Only he and Reggie Cleveland have the distinction of being a Canadian that started a World Series game. That was the year 2007, they, where they had to play one extra game or the last game of the season. That you were there at home plate. Yep, you were there, weren't you? Terrific extra inning game when. Matt Holiday scored from second base on a fly ball, and it was a tag play. And Tim McClellan still standing at home, and everybody assumed he was safe. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great game. San Diego and Colorado had to play the extra game. Game 163. Bautista out in front, but he hits it deep into left. Gonzalez has room over near the foul line. He makes the catch. The inning is over. So Francis has a bounce back second inning. He sets down the Blue Jays in order. Jays have a four nothing lead.
and Major League Baseball in saluting our military heroes. Help determine which military hero will represent the Blue Jays at the 2013 MLB All-Star Game in New York. Tonight, we profile Paolo Franco of Toronto, Ontario. Paolo has served as a member of the Canadian Forces for 12 years and now serves with the Peel Regional Police Force. He received a Commander's Unit commendation for his service in Afghanistan. The voting ends June 30th. Fans can vote at BlueJays.com. Great opportunity to send a hero to the All-Star Game, so make sure you log on and nominate your military hero. Connor Colvin, the center fielder. Trying to get something going for Colorado. Right down at the bottom of the zone, and you can see Colvin thought it was a bit low. Colvin had a tough night last night. He had three strikeouts and a walk. Stay right down there. He can't get hurt. No. All he can do is pound it into the ground. He's got excellent movement. Just with his regular fastball, and when he turns it over, runs down and away. Late on that fastball. Last year, Tyler Colvin set career highs with 27 doubles. He also had 10 triples, 55 extra base hits, and he drove in a career high 72 runs. He played all three outfield positions for the Rockies and played first base. He strikes out good sinking fastball. One down. The Blue Jays have really turned things around since they flipped the calendar to June. You look at the June ERA. Only the Royals have a better ERA than the Blue Jays. Atlanta is always known for their pitching. Is third, but the Jays pitching starters and relievers have gotten off to a great start in June. Yeah, those two guys right there have really picked it up. Josh Johnson pitching a great game last night. Mark Burley, of course, has been pitching equally as well. Jonathan Herrera goes after that fastball. I'm telling you what, that sinker is getting better every pitch he throws it. He's so got much more movement. depth to it now. Yep. Every time, and this is three starts now that we've had a chance to watch him go out there, he looks like a starting pitcher. He looks under control. He has athleticism where he can make changes. You teach him something new and he can adapt. Wow. Everybody wants to be a starting pitcher. They're the guys that drive the fancy cars and get the multi year contracts. <laughs> wow. Like the home run hitters. That's it. When did that happen? I mean, who are we teasing here? <laughs> Everybody wants to be a starter. I mean, that's where you make all your money, and that's where the game is. You've got to be a starter, got to have good starting pitching to win. Rajay Davis on the run over in the gap, runs it down, and here it is out to us. You know, I think what Esmil's really doing that I think is special. He's having fun with baseball right now. Every day he comes to the ballpark. He, he's one of those upbeat guys. He's in a good mood. He's very positive. And he was that way in the bullpen also. But I think now in this role you can see he's smiling out there enjoying what's going on in the game. Now oftentimes these players and even the veteran players forget that it's a Pretty good opportunity to play Major League Baseball, and I think you're right. Rogers understands that. Spent parts of four seasons with the Colorado Rockies. He was traded from Colorado to the Cleveland Indians last June, so a lot of these guys he played with mm -hmm. just last year. Came here and pitched really well against the Blue Jays out of the bullpen for the Indians late last year. Ball is. Driven into center field, Rajay Davis gives way to Melky Cabrera, who waves him off. A one, two, three, third inning. Blue Jays will bat bottom of the third. It'll be Edwin Encarnacion, who's already doubled tonight. Adam Lynn, he too has a double in an RBI, and Mark DeRosa hit his seventh double of the season in the first inning.
start of the season and before the game he's having a visit with Mark Burley and you can see how relaxed he is but man if you're not relaxed talking to Mark Burley you don't understand who Burley is. Well I mentioned how much fun that Espinel's having but I think Mark Burley is the epitome of that. He's always in a good mood. He's the same guy every single day whether he's going through a tough time or a good time and that's great to be around a teammate like that. And when Encarnacion doubled his first time up, he scored the second run of the ball game. Ball in the strike. Another slow breaking ball. The battery has gotten together here in the dugout, and it's been Rogers. Saw he had a smile for his catcher after the second out of the inning, but it seems as though they're on the same page as well. He's just a great kid with a great personality. I think he's loving this starting job right now. You know, he was an athlete, or he is an athlete. He was a converted infielder and converted to the pitching mound. And I think he's just scratching the surface of what he could do for the Blue Jays. I, I really do. I think it's another great example of how you have to be open to changes. He's even given Encarnacion. A little gear for that strikeout. <laughs> Everybody's relaxed. Well, he's saying, you know, I've been getting that pitch all night. Yeah, don't get on the umpire. Yeah, don't take it away from me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's good to see them laughing too, Edwin. Laughing. You know, usually they're not exactly happy with the umpire, but they can make fun of it with a four-run lead. Yeah, Ismail says, I love this umpire. Just leave him alone. Yeah, yeah don't don't get him mad. <laughs> But isn't baseball funny? Did, did anybody see this coming back in spring training? That's Neil Rogers in the starting rotation. No, I didn't. Nobody did. Off the end of the bat, Lynn hustling out of the box. Arenado in time on the money. Two down. Come find out why more Canadians trust Mr. Lube's trained technicians with their oil changes than any other quick lube. We're number one for a reason. Take good care. Game two of this three game set against the Colorado Rockies and the Blue Jays won last night two to nothing and they have a four nothing lead here tonight. This is the 14th game between these two teams and the home team has won every game in the series. Mark DeRosa hit a double to the base of the wall and left his first time up. Ball on a strike. And that ball that's just foul outside the foul line down the left field line. DeRosa sat back and got to that breaking ball, but just Pulled it a bit too much. Saw it right out of his hand. Recognized it. Didn't commit too quickly. And came oh so close to another extra base hit. During batting practice, DeRosa just kind of walked by and quietly said, We're getting confidence. Yeah, he told me, How about those Jays? <laughs> and I told him what they needed to do. Arenado can't get it by him. Takes his time and fires the first. DeRosa's retired. Jeff Francis had retired the last seven he's faced, but he still trails Rogers and the Jays for nothing.
by the manager John Gibbons and John last night you didn't have the hit sign on very much just three hits in the game but tonight you flashed it early <laughs> yeah last night was we want to give the fans a little more of a thrill but you know it's still early night yeah Francis has settled in a little bit the last couple of innings getting his breaking ball over and a little some change ups but we came out of the gate swinging you know uh, he's leaving some balls up and we were taking advantage of it if we talk about the starting pitchers, it seems like the worm has turned, and these guys are starting to get it dialed in. Yeah, Jack, they, they really are. You know, and uh, yeah, that's, you, you know as well as anybody, that, that's the key to baseball is, is the effort you get on the mound that night. And uh, they've been doing a tremendous job giving us a shot to win and really some dominating outings. Gibby, thanks for your time. Okay, guys. That's John Gibbons, the manager, with his thoughts on this ball game so far. And you're right, there's one thing that always stands out the team that dominates from the starting pitching standpoint it's going to be somewhere near the hunt at the end of the year. This has popped back over the screen out of play. Well it's funny how opportunity can present itself. Brandon Morrill was sent out in rehab and he had a little setback last night which could send it longer but Esmel Rogers gets the chance to pitch Jay Happ on the DL. And here he is, and all of a sudden he might create a log jam when Brandon or Jay gets ready to come back off. Jordan Pacheco hits it to third. DeRosa on the money this time. One down. Fans, if you want your baseball questions answered by our team of experts, email ask the experts at sportsnet.ca and keep your eye out for the home hardware ask the experts segment later on in the game. Those are the good problems that general uh, managers want to have right there, what you were just talking about. Jay Happ got the throw today. Throw some side session today for the first time, which is good. Yeah, he's going to advance from throwing on the side to live batting practice, simulated game, so he's still a ways away yet. Yeah, John Gibson was pretty much putting in perspective. He says, like, Jay's almost have to go through spring training all over again. And there's Min Ching, Ching Ming Wong. Who has also done a great job in his two outings for the Blue Jays? Well, they talked about building up some depth in the starting rotation for about two years. Carlos Gonzalez flies the ball toward left. Melky Cabrera is there, two outs. And having someone come out of the bullpen like Esmil Rogers, that's going to help you build some depth quickly. Well, I tell you what, he is a different pitcher as a starter than he is as a reliever. He's got confidence. He has shown that he is can adapt. He's picked up sinking fastball. You know, Buck, you, you said it in the last start. He's got swagger. And, and that's a good thing for a starter. You've got to believe. I remember coming over to two different teams as a veteran and talking to some of the younger pitchers, and I tried to tell him, look at when you take the mound, you're King Kong. It is yours. That piece of dirt is yours and you own it. And I did it in a positive way, trying to make sure that they didn't have any negative thoughts. I think Esmo is buying into that himself, and it radiates. You can see that he is enjoying this. Ball on a strike, two outs. I think, too, what he's done is he was open to adding the sinking fastball. Mm -hmm. A lot of guys come up here and they don't want to make any changes. Hey, I got here with this stuff. Well, you got to adjust. These are the best guys that you're ever going to face right here in the big leagues and Kadir gets jammed with that sinker. And that that's a ball that he didn't have in the first month of the season. And what are you going to do? You're going to leave it out of the plate. Michael Kadir could crush that ball out of the plate. But the fact that it's running in and getting in on his hands, not much any hitter can do when it's tailing in on your hands. A 2 2 count to Michael Kadir. You know, Buck, you said something interesting about up here in the big leagues, these are the best hitters you're going to face. You got the best coaches, too, right here. Pat Henkin, Pete Walker. You can't have any better coaches to help you with your pitches. Pat Henkin won a Cy Young. He knows a little bit about that game. When he speaks, I'm sitting down taking notes. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't want to rebuff his suggestions. And Rodgers didn't. He was wise enough to say, okay, show me that. And the sinking fastball was a pitch that Hankin saw. Scott Erickson threw. They were teammates in Baltimore. The Dyer lifts a fly ball in the center. Rajay Davis ranging in. He gets there. And another good inning for Ismail Rogers. They played three and a half here at Rogers Center. Blue Jays have a comfortable lead.
the new Blackberry Z10 and Q10 built to keep you moving. We talked about the Blue Jays getting hot and trying to make up some games in the standings, and they've done that just that. Since June the 4th, their 9 and 2 record, they've gained three games on Baltimore, Boston, New York, Tampa Bay lost again today to the Red Sox, and they picked up five games on Tampa Bay. Get to 500 and then go from there. Blue Jays will go back into the American League East beginning Friday. The Baltimore Orioles will be here at Rogers Center for a three game set. Then it's off to St. Petersburg to take on Tampa Bay and up to Boston for a four game series at Fenway. Rajay Davis picked up an RBI on a single in the first. He also scored the fourth run of the inning. You know, put it into perspective, not just those numbers of how they've gained ground in the East. They'll be battling them head to head, and that's where they really have to make up ground. Davis gets underneath it and drives it into center. Kind of Colvin call for it. Gonzalez peeled out of the way, but he trips over Colvin. He seemed to be all right. Left fielder has to give way to center fielder, and Absolutely. he has priority. Get back to my point though. The fact that they played the way they've played here in the last week and a half and rattled off a six game, maybe even a seven game win streak here tonight, is it's given the team the kind of confidence they have not had. There's a lot of new faces coming together, and all of a sudden they're they are literally coming together as a team. And we've all been through that before. We understand the dynamics of what that means, but when you start believing that you're better than the team across the diamond. And you start playing that way, it, it's a big plus. JP Aaron Sebia grounds out to second, two down, and Jeff Francis is on quite a roll here. That's nine in a row retired by Jeff Francis, but you wonder if it might be too little too late. He gave up a four spot in the first. Well, Blue Jays are hoping that, but you got to add on. I agree with what you're saying that you, the guys are starting to believe in it. And they're getting the great starting pitching and they're getting hot. Right when they're heading back into the east. That's when you want to be playing your best baseball. My Asturias bounces the ball. In front of home play. Rutgers makes a quick throw another good inning. For Jeff France Blue Jays have a four nothing lead. Now it's time for Blue Jays central update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn in the Blackberry broadcast studio. Cup. This is a highly anticipated tune up event for next year's World Cup. Tomorrow, Sportsnet World has Brazil, Mexico, followed by Italy, Japan. Visit sportsnet.ca slash world for details on how to subscribe. Great soccer action on Sportsnet World. The crowd on hand here at Rogers Center. Last night, 20,946 on hand. Looks like there might be a little bit better crowd tonight. 
The catcher, number five hitter, William Rosario, he reached on the DeRosa air in the second. Rosario in his first full season with the Rockies. We had a great year last year. 28 home runs. Right and ball for a strike. And that pitch right there really explains how confident Rogers is. Well, he threw the same pitch in, in the first pitch, but he rushed. His lower body got out in front and he adjusted quickly. And then he pounds that sinker down and in. And man, when he starts getting confidence in that, it's going to be fun to watch because it's a pitch that's going to be real tough on right handers. He's ahead of Rosario one and two. Strike three call. Boy, now you start exploiting both sides of the plate, and it's really going to compound the situation for the hitters. And it just froze him with the outer half fastball, and that is open because of that sinker down and in. He just freezes. So one down here in the fifth. Todd Helton looked back at Phil Cuzzy and because he's got to be thinking hey it's been a strike all night. Same spot same result. You know, it's not where he catches it it's where it goes over the plate and that ball is really diving. As it comes across the plate, Helton saying, "Who are you out there? I know I played with you, but you're not the same pitcher." Ninety-five. He went with the two seamer, four seamer, and tried to catch that outside corner and miss. A nice play, a little shovel toss, and Helton is retired. And Canacion takes one away from Todd Helton. Works to perfection. The PFP pitcher's fielding practice. Ball hits to the right side. Get off that mound. Get over there, become the first baseman. Edwin showing off his athleticism making the play. Well, Esmel Rogers wasn't involved in it, but today the pitchers came out early to. Practice some of those kind of drills, and that's always good to see. But defense gets sharper when pitching is always in front of the hitters. Northern Arenado takes the first pitch strike, and it's a terrific defensive play. Not only the glove, but to get to his feet so quickly. Easy play. Now you're taught to get to the ball, the pitcher, as quickly as you can so that he can find the bag in his steps. Rogers. In baseball terminology, is filthy tonight. The sink is dramatic, the break is wicked. He's ahead of Arenado 0 and 2. We're going to see all the pitchers out around 3 o'clock this afternoon. Taking what they call PFP pitchers fielding practice covering first base on this particular drill. They did bunt plays. They did comebackers starting the one six three double play. They did covering first bunch to third. Strike three call. Ismail Rogers two strikeouts in the inning. He is locked in. He drops the breaking ball on Nolan Arenado. Four strikeouts for Rogers through five.
Napier and Sebia working with Esmail Rogers and certainly in this relationship Aaron Sebia has the upper hand and experience and he has taken a leadership role and they seem to be working very well. Emilio Bonifacio the second baseman grounded out to third his first time. Jeff Francis has retired 10 straight. J.P. Aaron Seabe doubled with two outs in the first inning, and that's the last base runner to reach. Curveball missed the outside corner. Well, this would be a nice candidate to get on the bases right here. Emilio Bonifacio. He's got some power. He just hasn't shown it from the right side. They've been working hard with him, trying to keep his hands up. He has a tendency to drop them. And then swing right over the top of those pitches. Both he and Meister Astoris are much more comfortable now as they've had some time to play on this artificial surface. It's really been a challenge for them as they're both playing on artificial surface for the first time. As a home field, and Meister looks much different now than he did in April. And so does Emilio Bonifacio. We had a chance to talk to him before the game. He said, you know, I just didn't play that many games at second base. Last year. And certainly didn't play on the turf. Strike three count. Bonifacio strikes up. One down. Have you voted in the Kit Kat Chunky Challenge? Try all three new flavors today and cast your vote on Facebook for a chance to win some big, chunky prizes. Melky Cabrera has got one for two already tonight. We are in the fifth inning. The Jays have a four-run lead. Cabrera drives this ball to right. It's going to get down and go all the way to the wall. Michael Kadire has got a strong arm, and Melky Cabrera knew it. He made a turn, and he was thinking two all the way. He had his head up. He saw the throw was online, so he shut her down and settles for a single. Strong arm and an accurate arm, too. Yeah, and he really takes pride in learning the art of reading the ball off the wall. He's played primarily right field over the last few years. And Exclusively for Colorado, but he gets a hop right back at him. It ricochets off a seam there, and that's about all Melky wants is a first, is a single out of that one. <laughs> that throw was right on the money. One hop to second. Jose Bautista takes the breaking ball inside. Yeah, that's the old. I know who is out there in right field. Know yourself. He's thinking too. Hits the bag and say, oh, oh. <laughs> plays right in front of you. <laughs> Certainly don't want to be running into outs with Bautista and Encarnacion coming up. Just kidding, Michael. Just kidding. I'm going back to first. <laughs> <laughs> Bautista he is grounded out and fly out. 15 homers and 37 driven in for the Blue Jays right fielder. Be back and right after spending a couple of days in the DH spot. Pops this one up, headed back toward the seats. Rosario gives it a look, but it's well out of play. Bautista tied with Mark Trumbull with 15 home runs. Davis leads the American League in another home run last night in Detroit off Max Scherzer, his 24th. He's got a five homer lead over Miguel Cabrera, who also homered in that game in Detroit. Cabrera has 71 RBIs. Chris Davis, 61. Encarnacion with an RBI tonight has 56. He's third in the American League. This is popped up. 
Rosario takes his mask off and makes the catch in foul ground. Willen Rosario has a experienced backup catcher in your Vitoriabo who sometimes gets bored when he's not playing. So he grabbed the scouting report from the catching coach Jerry Weinstein and Weinstein was looking for the report. <laughs> Toriyama got a kick out of that. So my coach didn't know where the report was. He said hey that's a very valuable piece of paper you're messing with. Right no there. no 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> that will cost you. <laughs> Two down in Carnacion takes one inside. Watch the at bats of both Jose Bautista and Edwin Encarnacion. You can see they were measuring that breaking ball from Jeff Francis. He was just missing off the plate. And I think it was just a matter of time before one of them got one over the middle of the plate and they're going to hit it hard. Here it comes in right where Edwin likes it, head down, and he just powers it into the bullpen for the home run with a short, strong swing. Strong being the key word. Edwin is so strong. And those are two absolute line drives that he's hit in this game. They got out of here. In a, that, that one got out of here in a hurry. The other one's off the center field wall in his first at bat. And it doubled his first time up. He's driven in three. He has now tied Miguel Cabrera for second in the American League with 19 home runs. Watch it one more time. Off speed pitch and. He hits it hard. Mark Barroso was around the batting cage today, admiring the strength of Edwin. Francis reaches for it, and Lind is retired. The inning is over, but the Blue Jays extend their lead to six nothing. We're headed for the sixth, and here comes the Home Hardware cleanup crew. Brought to you by Natura, Home Hardware's exclusive line and safe, environmentally friendly cleaning products. Our guests of TD enjoy the evening, and the Blue Jays have a big lead. And over in the Jays Care Community Clubhouse are some very special guests from Camp Aaron. Welcome to the ballpark, and you are bringing us good luck tonight. Esmil Rogers, one walk, four strikeouts, no hits through 59 pitches. Ground ball, shortstop, Estoris backhands in time. Connor Colvin is retired. One pitch, one out. It doesn't get any better than that. 
S. Mills pitch count in great shape at 60 pitches through five and a third. Yes. Throw that two seamer up there. Let them hit it into the ground. Let the defense do their thing. Rogers has thrown 12 pitches in the first, second, third, and fifth. He threw 10 pitches in the fourth. I mean, you talk about economical. They told him, hey, you know what? We're going to count your pitches. He says, okay, I'm not going to throw many. <laughs> <laughs> Smart kid. You can count them all you want. <laughs> I asked him how he felt after the last game. And he said he felt strongly through 93 pitches. He said I could have easily gone to 110, but they wanted to take me out. He keeps throwing the way he is tonight. He's going to be able to go nine. Rogers made a career high 13 starts for Colorado in 2011. He was just 25 years old. He is. Had a six and six record, but more importantly, had a 7.05 ERA. That was in 2011 while he was with the Rockies. Herrera gets the first hit for Colorado, a single in the center. Rajay Davis over to cut it off. A one out single, and that's the first hit of the ball game for Colorado. Now the crowd acknowledging. What Esmo is doing in this game. And it's been special. That actually was probably one of the few mistakes he's made in the game. A fastball that stayed up. And Herrera just jumps on top of it. And behind in the count, he's hunting fastball and gets it. Back to the top of the order. Second baseman Josh Rutledge makes the first pitch strike. Well, that was the problem that Rogers had with the number nine hitter. He fell behind. He's been ahead all night long. He's thrown 11 of 19 first pitch strikes. First or second pitch, he's been in that zone. And that creates a swing mindset with the hitters. Ball and a strike. Inside off the plate. We mentioned Rogers spent parts of four seasons with the Colorado Rockies, 2009 through 2012. His ERA was over six and a half, and since he's moved on to the Indians and here to Toronto, has dramatically improved his ERA. You know, the one thing that I can try to guess is he's out of Colorado, the Mile High City. It's a uh, it's a place that's tough to pitch and I know they use the balls in the humidor now but it's still tough takes a little something away from the breaking ball mm -hmm. but when I watch some of his games when he was with Colorado his fastball was straight I mean it was right over the top it was straight he couldn't command it couldn't control it and then he has fallen behind again here three and one to Rutledge. Full count. Blue Jays have turned a double play behind Ishmael Rogers. It came in the second inning, a 5 4 3 double play that ended the second. Jordan Pacheco is 0 for 2. He's on deck. Cut on and miss. Rutledge strikes out. Uh, good comeback right there. Falling behind and able to. Command the fastball on the 3-1 pitch and get it to move on the 3-2 pitch. Look at the spin of that baseball. You create that type of spin and then you start getting that kind of movement. You're going to get that ball right under the bat. Jordan Pacheco is a DH tonight. He's a first baseman catcher. He was drafted out of the University of New Mexico in 2007 in the ninth round. Last year, he hit 309, fifth in the National League.
Bounces this ball up the third baseline. That's a foul ball. It's significant because as a rookie, he was the first rookie to make the top five in the National League since 1974. And in 74, there were a pair of rookies that hit in the top five Greg Gross of the Astros and Bill Madlock of the Cubs. So it's a pretty significant accomplishment for Jordan Pacheco. Not a lot of power. Sprays the ball all over the field. Got a nice little short swing. Was five home runs last year and those 475 at bat. He's behind 0 and 2 and steps up. Top of the sixth inning. Inside. Esmail Rogers lost his no hitter with a one out single to Jonathan Herrera. He's still at first. Line to the second baseman. The inning is over. Esmail Rogers has one hit to Rockies through six. He struck out five. He gets Rutledge on a good sinking fastball. in Major League Baseball in saluting our military heroes. Help determine which military hero will represent the Blue Jays at the 2013 All-Star Game in New York. Help recognize people like Nicholas Kerr of Victoria, B.C. Nicholas was a member of the Princess Patricia's Canadian Light Infantry serving in Afghanistan. He now volunteers with community and veterans groups and is a member of the Wilderness Rescue Team. The voting ends June 30th. Fans can vote at BlueJays.com. Bottom of the sixth, Mark DeRosa will start things off. Cuts on the fastball. It's a ball and a strike. Blue Jays scored two runs on three hits in last night's win. They shut out Colorado 2 0. DeRosa swings right through that pitch. And the location right there. Jeff Francis on that fastball is getting better. He's able to paint on the outside corner. DeRosa drives this ball to right. Kadire on the move on the track makes the catch. Esmail Rogers has faced his former club for the first time and he's made a positive impression. Well, he's dominated. This game tonight, only one hit. He's got the sinker working. He's got the good hard slider working. He's going the fastball in and out. It's just working. Everything's working. Yeah, I think that's the key for him that he's been able to go both sides of the plate with his fastball. Right-handers, he's been able to pound in and then go away if he needs to. 
same thing with the left handers. I mean that sinker really plays into the left is down and away. What he has done is he's commanded both sides of the plate. And then anytime you can do that and put both sides of the plate in the hitter's mind, you're going to have success. No question. For me, it always starts on the inner half. If you can start there, then you get the outer half as the game goes on. Ball on the strike. Rajay Davis lays off that pitch. You mentioned Rogers grew up in the Rockies organization. This has to be somewhat satisfying, although I'm sure he will enjoy the satisfaction when the game is over. Right now, he's got his mindset on pitching. No, I think he's enjoying this. <laughs> Anytime you go against your former team, you want to show that they made a mistake. You want to show them that you should have held on to me. I'm, I'm going to just pitch my best game of the season. Davis waits on the curveball, hits it to the shortstop. Herrera unloads in a hurry. Two down. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. He's got an update. Zach Britton up from the minor leagues has held the Tigers just three hits through four innings. Verlander seven hits five earned runs four walks and there's a drive to left Aaron Sebia has just left the yard. J.P. Aaron Sebia a two out home run his 15th of the season. Well, he's starting to get that home run swing back, and he's not forcing it. That, that's the thing that I see with JP over the last couple of days. He's not forcing the ball out of the ballpark and swinging wildly. It's a controlled swing. Watch this pitch from Francis in her half. That doesn't take a lot of muscle right there if you just use your hands the way he is, staying inside the ball. That's what they're working on, and that ball is in the second deck. Meister Asturias swings on that pitch outside. Home runs are a byproduct of a good swing, and Chad Matola and J.P. Aaron Seba have worked and working together ever since that day in Chicago when J.P. really struggled against the White Sox. There's a drive to left off the bat of Asturias, back-to-back home runs. Meister Asturias. His fourth of the season. Well, they're having a little bit of fun with the bats in their hands tonight. Eight runs. And in the middle of all that, Jeff Francis has pitched a pretty decent game, but the home runs have killed him. In the last, in the fifth inning, and here two in the seventh, sixth inning. My sir, with his fourth home run, his first batting right handed. Up the middle. Bonifacio down the line, and the inning is over. But the Blue Jays get a pair of two out home runs. JP Aaron Sebia hits the first of two, his 15th. It's 8 nothing Blue Jays.
and the Tigers will hook up. It all starts at 1 p.m. Eastern on Sportsnet. Pacific West, Ontario, and East. That's 10 a.m. Pacific time. The Orioles and the Tigers. In that game, it'll be Chris Tillman against Rick Porcello. The pitching matchup. We're into the seventh. Ismail Rogers is shutting out the Rockies on one hit. It'll be Gonzalez, Kadire, and Rosario. Three, four, and five in the Rockies batting order. Two and zero. Oh. A big baseball fan in attendance, Getty Lee. Uh, we want to congratulate him again for his induction into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Getty Lee is a big Blue Jays fan. And we had mentioned the fact that he made a huge donation to the Negro League Baseball Museum in Kansas City. Over 200 baseballs Getty Lee donated to the Negro League Baseball Museum of signed baseballs from Negro League players. It was quite a Honor and they were thrilled to have it. Yeah, that was a really cool display. We got a chance to see that when we were in Kansas City when you and I toured the complex. Gonzalez drives this ball down the left side. Long run for Cabrera. He can't get there, and it'll bounce out of play for a ground rule double. Leadoff double for Gonzalez. Let's check in with Jamie Campbell. Tampa Bay breaking out one of their new players. Will Myers is one for one in game two. The focal point of that trade with Kansas City, James Shields and Wade Davis went to Kansas City, and basically it was for Odorisi and Will Myers. Michael Kadire singles to left. Gonzalez stops at third, so a double and a single here in the seventh. We've been talking about the pitching of the Blue Jays and how well they have pitched. There was a 21 straight inning consecutive score of innings thrown up by the Blue Jays at Texas. Remember the Nelson Cruz home run then 21 straight innings. They also then set out and if there wasn't that 200 runs in the ninth inning at the Rangers they were shutting out the Rangers there the other day. 200 runs after an error. Then they shut out the Rockies yesterday, and they've shut them out again here tonight for six innings. They have been throwing up a ton of zeros lately. Willian Rosario, the catcher, takes one downstairs. Michael Kadire with that single has extended his hit streak to a career high 16 games. Well, he hunted that fastball, and he got one right out over the plate there. Very, very good fastball hitter. There's a base hit to left field that will get the Rockies on the board. William Rosario got a pitch up in the zone and hammered it to left. His 36th RBI of the season, and Colorado is on the board. So Pete Walker is going to go to the mound, and the bullpen is starting to move around for the Jays. Well, three pitches that were up in the zone. Really, the double by Gonzalez was a ball that hung up, and if it wasn't for the slow legs. Of Melky, I think a lot of left fielders would have caught that, but it is what it is, and he ends up scoring the first run. And I know Pete's going to just tell him, "Hey, regroup here. Let's get back to getting the ball down." That Aaron Loop is up and throwing, and this is the kind of game, guys, that I know. Sometimes I talk like I'm a dinosaur, but in the pre-pitch count era, you got eight runs to work with, and you're into the sixth inning, seventh inning. You kind of look out to the bullpen and you say to yourself, I've got a night off, guys. I'll handle it from here. And really, Esmel Rogers' pitch count, pitch count is in great shape. It's just that he gave up three quick hits here. He's trying to try to work himself out of this. But this is the challenging part of a ball game. You think things are great when you're cruising along, but when adversity comes up, how quickly can you regroup? And we'll see what he can do here. I think that's a great point. And obviously, your focus was. 
as a member of a team. Right. And you were thinking, okay, if I can complete this game, I'll give my bullpen a night off. I mean, obviously, nobody can predict what's going to happen tomorrow and after the off day over the weekend. John Gibbons doesn't know. He might need every arm down in his bullpen in the next couple of starts. You've got a cushion right here. So I agree with you 100%. I'm laughing. They might play 18 innings again one of these Don't days. Don't even go there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but oh, absolutely. Point taken about sure. what you were saying. And a couple of thoughts from my end. I, it's the third time through. Third time that the Rockies have seen Rodgers now. There was a line drive right at the second baseman to end the sixth inning and then three hard hit balls here. Looks like he's getting a little bit on the side of the ball. He's not driving it down. The ball's hitting underneath it a little bit. And the sinker doesn't have the sink that we saw early in the in this ball game. And just stay on top of it just a little bit more. Two and one to help. Upstairs. Well, and Tavi, that's back to my point. I think you learn the most deeper in games. And you have to get through that third and fourth at bat to really understand pitching and what you are doing early in a ball game. Why you pitch balls in early in a game to see if a guy can handle it and try to save something for deeper in the game. On the ground, Bonifacio will go to first and throw out Helton. The runners move up. That's the first out of the inning. Kadir moves to third. Rosario moves into second. Jack, your point about learning. I mean, obviously, Rogers was dealing. He could close his eyes and throw a strike with anything early in this game. Well, now it's a different story. And that's my whole point. Everything was going good. And then all of a sudden, there's a mental lapse, or there's a longer inning, and you come back out there, and there's no question. Your body is going through something different. And the guys that can adjust the quickest from a ball that's elevated or a ball that you leave out over the plate and get back into that rhythm that you had when things were going well. Those are the guys that are going to go deeper into ball games. He gave him seven innings his last time out. That was against the Rangers at this third time through in that game. He threw more breaking balls. More curve balls more slow breaking balls. There's two more. Arenado. Grounds it to Encarnacion. Rogers makes a good play. You better turn around. There's a guy in third. <laughs> they have to do more PFP. Two outs. Rogers customers can watch every Blue Jays game this season on Sportsnet live on your smartphone. Visit RogersAnyPlaceTV.com slash sports to get started. Yeah, Ismail Rogers just kind of looked away, but... The catcher was running from second and third, and now John Gibbons has come out of the dugout, and he's got purpose to his walk. He is going to make a pitching change here. Ismail Rogers will come out of the game in the seventh inning with two outs. Rogers in line for the win. We'll turn things over to the bullpen. Pat on the back from the manager and a nice round of applause. A very deserving round of applause right there. Rodgers is out there and Luke is in. Blue Jays up eight to two.
as pitching coach. Rogers goes four and two thirds, allows just four hits, two runs so far. The runner at third is his responsibility, but he leaves in line for the win and turn things over to Aaron Luke, the lefty. This is all about John Gibbons wanting to save that run over there at third base. Luke versus left handers just 213. No home runs and more importantly, leadoff men retired 71% of the time. He sets them down, which is the fourth best of the relievers. Casey Jansen, of course, the best at 90% of first batter retired. When you have that kind of record, managers are very comfortable bringing you in with two outs and a runner on. Holden gets jammed and DeRosa can't get there and he breaks his back. I'm not sure he got all of that one. <laughs> <laughs> but it sure made me smile. You love that, don't you? I think it's better than 10 strikeouts. You get a bat pretty much emphasizes where that pitch was. You can't hit a ball off your hands. Well, you can, but it's not going to go very far. <laughs> <laughs> and it hurts. <laughs> it makes hitters aware of the inside part of the plate. Came right back in there. He wanted another bat. Kawasaki and Rogers having a good time <laughs> on the bench, and you know what they were talking about. Man, he got so deep in his kitchen, he broke that bat in six places. <laughs> Time to drop that curveball, isn't it? Bouncing ball under the glove of Asturias in the left field. Asturias tried to backhand it. Ball stayed down on him and got under the glove. It's an air on the shortstop. No RBI for Colvin. Yeah, it comes up with it. He's going to get him over at first base. But the ball didn't come up for him. Go over there. You can see it. That last ball it hit the turf and stayed down on Miser. So that finishes the book on Rogers. He is charged with three runs. In six and two thirds. Yeah, and because of the error there, it'll only be two earned runs. See, Rogers is having a conversation with a teammate across the diamond. Jonathan Herrera, switch hitter, went back to get his right handed helmet, and he flies out on the first pitch to end the inning. Colorado scores three, but the Blue Jays have an 8-3 lead. When we come back, it'll be the top of the order. Melky Cabrera is two for two. He scored a pair of runs. Jose Bautista and Edwin Encarnacion. A double, a home run, three RBIs so far tonight.
Honda CRV and IIHF's top safety pick. Honda is the official vehicle of the Toronto Blue Jays. Uh, he hits a lot of them. Here's number 19. Breaking ball and Edwin crushes it on a line. Off the back wall in the bullpen. Three more RBIs tonight for Encarnacion. He also smoked the ball to center field with that home run. Our drive of the game. Manuel Corpus in for the sixth time this season. He was a former closer for Colorado. He has gone through Tommy John surgery. He missed the entire 2011 season, so he's working his way back into form. Yeah, he was a closer in 2007 for the Colorado Rockies. Fastball 90 92 slider, which is pretty decent, but he's not the same pitcher as he was when he closed. You saw Jeff Francis on the Rockies bench. He had a tough start. He gave up four runs on six hits in the first and would later on give up three home runs. He finishes with eight runs on 10 hits given up. And jumps his ERA to 658. And the Rockies got to find the spot for Roy Oswald, who's going to start on Thursday. And they head down to Washington. And rumors are that Roy Oswald's going to throw Thursday. The Rockies go from here to Washington and take on the Nationals for a three game series, and then they go into Boston to play the Red Sox. That's Jim Wright to the right of Walter Weiss, who's the manager in his first year. Tom Reynolds on the right of your screen, former Montreal manager, is the bench coach in his fourth season with Colorado. Cabrera fouls it back over the screen. Melky Cabrera has singled twice and scored a pair. Two for three, and he's bumped his average up five points with that two hit effort. Cabrera strikes out that the first out of the seventh inning. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership. Beautiful shot of Toronto. CN Tower high above Rogers Center on the shores of Lake Ontario. And the Blue Jays trying to win their seventh straight ball game. Boy, oh boy, how quickly things turn around. Blue Jays looking for their first seven game win streak since 2008. And they won 10 games during that seven game stretch. The Blue Jays would love to continue this ride. Five years ago, huh? Part of a 10 game winning streak. Well, this is the time of a ball game that you really have to grind it out and make sure that it ends up the way it should. If you're the Blue Jays, you've got to win this game. You can't let this let this one slip away. Well, you saw Kobe Rasmus and John Gibbons was pointing to the lineup, and they're probably going to make a defensive change here and get Rasmus into the game. Put Rajay Davis over and left for mm -hmm. Milwaukee Cabrera. Gibbons has been pretty consistent in getting Cabrera out of the game for defense late with the lead. You know, there, there's also two arguments about, and we do live in the pitch count era, so it does change the dynamics, but he's got left hander Darren Oliver up in the pen right now, and it looks like he's going to be coming in to pitch the eighth inning. And when your bullpen has done the job that it's done, it's really important that you keep them fresh. That they get their work in, albeit not stretched out as long. You don't want guys to have to pitch four innings out of the bullpen, but get them a couple outs or an inning. That's just what you want. Isn't it funny how that works? Early on, the bullpen was pitching way too much. Yep. And they were close to getting tired. Now the starters are pitching so well, the bullpen can't get any work. <laughs> it's a real challenge for a pitching coach. Pete Walker in his first year as the big league pitching coach. He's got to sit down every day and map out the strategy to keep everybody fresh. Bautista skies it to center. 
Tyler Colvin waits up, makes the catch. Two outs. You know, with all of that said, I think they'd rather have it this way right here. Yeah, this is the way it's designed. Yeah, starters go deeper in the bullpen. You know, you don't you don't keep the guys fresh, and that's a good thing sometimes. Well, well it's going to be interesting when Jose Reyes comes back, and I still say he's going to be back within a week. And then they're going to have to make a decision. Do you want to stay with three extra men? Or do you want to get down to seven relievers? Well, ultimately, we can all take our guess as to what they'll do, but we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, there's no reason to speculate, but they have four righties and four lefties in the bullpen. And they have three bench players. You know what else they're doing is they're heading into the American League East. Back in the East against Baltimore, Tampa Bay, and Boston, teams that can really hit. They might want to keep all of those relievers. There's your bullpen pitchers right there. I tell you what, right now, this is the best bullpen in the American League. It's good. With the depth they have and four quality left handers, nobody else can boast that. And the emergence of Steve Delabar and the development of Brett Cecil as a reliever. Of course, Casey Jansen has recaptured his form from a year ago after some concerns with off-season shoulder surgery. And the Neil best. Wagner's helped. I wanted to go back to the shot of the pen. The best arm in that bullpen might be the guy that was standing in front. He's still not in the picture there. It's Figueroa. <laughs> I think he's been around since I was here, and he's still throwing great batting practice. Yeah, he throws about 100 pitches every day. <laughs> That's durable. Two and two to Edwin Encarnacion. Bounced up the third baseline. Arenando bottles it. During the transfer, Nolan Arenado bobbled the ball. Going to be an interesting scoring decision. He was going to have to make a quick play. He was deep in third and had a long run to come and get it. 50 50. He has shown great reflexes and great reactions down at third base, but just can't come up with it. And here at home, Edwin doesn't get the break. They give him an air, and I agree with you. The advantage you would think would go to the Home hitter, but that's not the case. Arenado is charged with his third air. Adam Lind had an RBI single in that four run first inning. He now has driven in 25 for the season. Lynn takes that strike reluctantly. It looks like it's well off the plate, but it's a ball and a strike. But I think his approach now is hey, umpires, they're just like players. We don't catch every ball and we don't hit every pitch. And umpires don't get every call right. So what are you going to do about it? And showing no emotion there. All right. Two and one now. I'm okay. That's a sign of a very confident hitter. Two balls and a strike to Adam Lynn. Two outs. Goes after that outside pitch. They're working Lind away. And that might play right into his hand. We haven't really seen Lind have any trouble with anything away. Generally, when he has problems is when they run that ball up and in. They're going to try it right here. And you got a good pitch to hit and cuts right through it. The inning is over. Blue Jays get a base runner, but leave one. Darren Oliver into the game, and they've had plenty of run support. Edwin Encarnacion, his 19th homer in the fifth. Aaron Sebier, his 15th in the sixth. And his stores back to back in the sixth. First time the Jays have gone back to back this year.
season, Aaron Loop pitched one third of an inning. He closed out the seventh. Now it's over to Oliver. Off the DL and now pitching like a veteran he is, just like he did last year. A couple of changes defensively for the Blue Jays. Meister Asteris goes from short to second. Kawasaki comes off the bench to take over at short, and Bonifacio goes to short. Nice play by DeRosa. In plenty of time, Josh Rutledge is retired. First time of the eighth. Well, we got to put a little star next to that play right there. DeRosa showing some soft hands. Watch him play this ball. Backs up on it just a little bit and then plays the in between hop. Keep that glove down. Work it up and finish the play. Another thing he did, he watched that ball right into his glove. Played it off to the side, had a good angle. He committed an air, a throwing air in the second. But then started an inning ending double play in that same second inning. Jordan Pacheco. The DH has got 0 for 3 with a strikeout. You know, and if there is a calming force amongst the locker room, it's Mark DeRosa. Here's a guy that's the veteran player comes in, and I think a lot of younger players have gravitated towards him. He's he's the coach that doesn't have that title, and he's done a great job wherever he plays. He's got that East Coast savvy as well. He's from New Jersey and he's got that Jersey accent. He talks to you. Out of a, side a little of funny. Yeah, it's <laughs> a little funny. We can say that. <laughs> but he is all about baseball. What do he say today? Here come the Jays. Yeah. Watch out for the Jays. That ledge strikes out for a second time. Oliver paints the outside corner. There are nothing that Pacheco could do right there. That's a paint job right there by the veteran Darren Oliver. Reads bats and paints it down and away. Good job by Aaron CB again to frame that ball and keep it right there. Jordan Pacheco 0 for 4. Now Carlos Gonzalez had a ground rule double and scored the first Rockies run back in the center. Good numbers across the board for Gonzalez. 311-20. And 56. Kawasaki cuts it on the line. An easy inning for Darren Oliver. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth. Blue Jays lead it 8-3. Now it's time for a Blue Jays Central update. Here's Jamie Campbell and Greg Zahn in the Blackberry Broadcast Studio. Sunday, July 1st, the Blue Jays will take on the Detroit Tigers. 107 start. Come down early and enjoy the pregame festivities outside Rogers Center. The first 20,000 fans into Rogers Center will receive a Blue Jays replica red baseball cap. Come celebrate Canada's birthday. 
Call the Blue Jays at 416-341-1234. Log on to BlueJays.com to order your tickets for Canada Day. Or stop by Roast Rogers Plus locations. New pitcher in for the Rockies is the right-hander, Wilton Lopez. He has been used a lot now, second in the National League, with those 37 games, 1-3, 425 earned run average. Good command, average fastball, sliders decent, a little bit of a change-up. Ground ball pitcher when he is on. DeRosa drives this to right. Kadire over in the corner makes the grab. One down. What a beautiful night at Rogers Center. Cool evening. Not a cloud in the sky. And the Blue Jays are enjoying an 8-3 lead. Trying to make it two in a row against the Rockies and stretch their win streak to seven straight. Rajay Davis had an RBI single and scored a run in the first. Blue Jays scored four runs on six hits in the first against Jeff Francis. And Francis settled down, eventually would retire 11 in a row, but then the Blue Jays got to him for three home runs later on in the game. In Carnacion, Aaron Sebia and Meiser Stores all with homers tonight. Bouncing ball, Rutledge gets a big hop on loads in a hurry to throw out Davis. In the current issue of Sportsnet magazine, we explain why it's been 20 years since the Cup came home to Canada, and we'll tell you who's the most likely to break the drought. Subscribe to Sportsnet.ca slash magazine to read all about it. It has been America's Cup and will be again this year. Boston up two games to one over the Blackhawks. Boy, they've been good games, every one of them. J.P. Aaron Seavey's had a good night at the plate. A couple of extra base hits and an RBI double in the first and a home run in the sixth. J.P.'s now driven in 35 for the season. Pops this one up over near the Rockies. Dugout and it'll be back out of play. Isn't it funny how it comes and goes as a hitter? A week ago he couldn't buy a hit at the plate. Had a really tough series in Chicago. Then homered a couple of times in Texas, homered again tonight. You're right about the roller coaster ride, boy. It sure helps when you're an everyday player. You can learn to Ride the roller coaster and try to keep an even keel. I think JP's just now starting to learn that. The peaks and valleys, you want to even that, that out just a little bit. Yeah, those are the, where the good ones are. They stay right on that even keel. Chop down toward third. The pitcher makes a great play and then airmails it all the way down the right field line. Aaron Sebia will head towards second. Wilton Lopez made a terrific barehanded grab of the play, but he should have just put it in his pocket. <laughs> yeah, either that or let the third baseman take it. I was going to say, he made a strong throw. What do you? What's wrong with that? <laughs> you know, the guy in the first row. Off balance and whoopsie! <laughs> Sinker meets it into the ground. That's a nice effort. But he knows as soon as he lets it go, he's going to be charged with an error. So it's an infield hit for Aaron Sebia. He has a three hit night. The air charge to Lopez allows Aaron Sebia to get into scoring position for Meister Asturias. Now Meiser with the home run from the right side is now homered from both sides of the plate this year.
Steve Delabar starts to loosen up in the Blue Jays bullpen. Luke worked a third of an inning. Oliver had a quick one, two, three, eighth inning. Delabar hasn't pitched for a while. Well, and he'll get the ninth, and again, Pete Walker and John Gibbons trying to keep that bullpen sharp. They'll all try to get their one innings worth of work. Last time we saw Delabar was Thursday. Pitch the opener in Texas, worked an inning, struck out the side, gave up a single. So he's due for an inning. Get him out there and then throw a few strikes. Two and two to Asturias. Drives this one in the center. Colvin has a beat on it. The inning is over. We will go to the ninth. The Blue Jays riding a four run first inning have an 8 3 lead. Steve Delamar into the ball game. Game brought to you by Bacardi Oakheart Smooth Spiced Rum. Bacardi is a proud partner of the Toronto Blue Jays. We'll do a little something different here. We want to give it to the right side of the infield. Kadire hits the ball to the right side. What Edwin goes over there, and then Bonifacio, nice little bounce pass to Encarnacion to record the out over there at first base. He recognizes Edwin's going to have to get over there quickly, and Edwin with a nice play or smooth move tonight. Carnacion did a good job. Bonifacio knew that he couldn't throw it on the fly. He bounced it, and it was a perfect play. Steve Delabar in to work the ninth. Aaron Loop, a third of an inning. Oliver, an inning, and now Delabar in the ninth. Mentioned Steve Delabar has not pitched since Thursday down in Arlington. Kadir, Rosario, and Helton for Colorado. Now one of the things that Steve has been doing a little bit more while he is in there is he's using his fastball. He's using it a lot to jam hitters. Pound it in that strike zone and if he has to it's been a slider up there and throw the occasional splitter now. You know we talked about how Mark DeRosa is kind of a veteran leader. They've also got another one in the staff in the bullpen Darren Oliver. Between Pat Henkin and Darren Oliver, you see the fastball riding up right there. I really been talking to Steve Delabar about throwing that fastball more. They said, "Look at Steve, you don't realize how hard it is to hit a 96 mile an hour heater. You got to throw more of them right over the plate. Get ahead in the count, especially when you can throw it up there. You can throw it in the lower part of the strike zone and then up around the shoulders to get the strikeout. One down." 
Willine Rosario has got one for three. And an RBI single in that three run seventh inning. That's good breaking ball. Oh, Uncle Charlie. Hard late break. Once again, when you know a pitcher throws as hard as Delamar, you have a tendency to get the bat going. You got to get it started. And that's just not fair when he's paying for the water. Corner, mid 90s. One and two. Splitter in the dirt. One thing Casey Jansen has tried to put into the, the reliever's mind is this is the pitch. You don't want to go any further than two and two. No. Get something to happen right here. And he will go three and two. That looked like a slider. Yeah. Again, trying to be a little too fine. Well, you talk about baseball 101 when those two guys start talking about pitching. And they never stop talking about it. It's a master's course. Yeah. So there's the one out walk to Rosario. Now it's time for a preview of what's coming up on Connected. Here's Ken Reed and Devonta Osman. First baseman Todd Helton goes after the first pitch and fouls it back. Helton has had a phenomenal career. He's a five time All Star. Batting champion 2000. Good fastball away. He has been able to handle the lefty that thing Delabar because he can. Paint that fastball away to the lefty and then use the splitter. His splits are actually better against left handed batters this year. And he strikes out Todd Helton second strike out of the inning didn't waste any time went right out for that outside corner. One more time. Boy, that's a good, good pitch. So the Rockies are down to their last out. The rookie Nolan Arenado has gone over three. Mark Burley is on quite a run. He will start tomorrow against Juan Nicasio. Burley picked up his third win his last time out. And believe me, he doesn't want to be the guy that nope. drops the ball in this great run of starting pitching. Isn't that how it works? They all start getting on a roll and they want to one up each other. Follow the leader. And that's the great part of the snowball effect. Doug sensing that final pitch. And another great game for the Blue Jays. 22,852 on hand. 0 2. Foul. You see what he has done after he walked Rosario? He's using his fastball again. Blew away Todd Helton, who's thrown three straight to young Nolan Arenado. Strikes out the side. The Blue Jays have won seven in a row, eight three tonight against Colorado. Home run bats once again for the Blue Jays. The four runs in the first inning were huge. They came out smoking against Jeff Francis, and then the back-to-back -back home runs by Aaron Sebia, Estouris, and Carnacion. 
Offense is clicking and the pitching is right there too. Well, that's Mill Rogers comes out and does his part tonight and the offense picked him up early, but he pitched a whale of a game and it's just exciting to see all the starters getting on a roll here as the Blue Jays start feeling a little bit more of that winning spirit. JP and a three hit night. We'll be back for the finale tomorrow. Blue Jays win at 8-3. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned. Ken Reed, Ivanka Osmond. Here's Connected.